Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this tutorial we're going to be covering mono behavior scripts. I'll be introducing you to a few simple concepts of mono behaviors, and we'll be creating a simple script that we can test out by attaching it to this robot game object I have gone ahead and created. You can see that this robot has a transform, which all game objects do of course, and a sprite renderer, but nothing else besides that. So if I was to go ahead and hit play, absolutely nothing would happen. Even if I was to remove the tiles that exist under it, it wouldn't be affected by gravity. So our game object is about as simple as we can make it while still displaying it right now. So if we want to make it so that our robot character can do something inside of the game while the game runs, we're going to need a mono behavior script for that. So to add a new mono behavior script to our project, we can hit add component and type in the name that we want to give our mono behavior script. So I could call it change color and by doing this it will create a new C sharp script called change color. By default this will go in the root folder of our project. I recommend trying to organize things a little bit and putting it in some kind of scripts folder like so. Uh, just because as your game grows there's going to be a lot of assets so you kind of want to try to manage things a little better and I definitely need to clean this up. so. Uh, let's just delete that for now. Okay, in any case, the script exists inside of our project now and it is attached to the robot, but it doesn't currently do anything. So in order to edit it, we need to go over here to the right and hit edit script. So edit script is going to open that file up in our code editor of choice. And we can check what code editor we're using with Unity by going up to edit preferences. And then external tools. You can see here I'm using Visual Studio 2017. Visual Studio Code is also an option. And I, I believe Unity also has uh, Mono Develop. I don't know if that's still standard or not. And Unity used to at least have Mono Develop. I don't know if that's still around, but you can use whichever editor you want. I prefer to go with Visual Studio 2017. So I'm going to go over to the change color component inside of our robot inspector. And I'm going to edit the script. So now that I have Visual Studio opened, we can see what's inside the script file currently. So you can see here it's by default declared as a public class change color, which is the name of our script. And this class extends the mono behavior class. So you can see if we have over mono behavior, it says it's the base class from which every Unity script derives. And that, what that means is that basically if you want anything to occur inside of your game, it's going to need to come at least at some level from a mono behavior script. You can create classes that don't inherit from mono behavior, but you're going to need a mono behavior in order to execute anything. And the reason for this is that there are certain lifecycle events that exist within Unity that you need scripts, mono behavior scripts in order to hook into. So what will occur inside of Unity is that the game engine will be running through certain cycles. And on every frame, it'll go through all of these methods and any script that uses mono behavior will execute their methods at those points in time. So for instance, update is a method you can implement. And what that'll do is that once per frame, whatever is inside of here is going to be called. So if your game runs 60 frames per second, it's going to be called 60 times in a second. There's also void fixed update which operates like update, except it only is called a set number of times per frame. I'm not exactly sure how many that is, but the difference is update can run as many times as your computer can handle, but fixed update will be more of a consistent number like 30 or 60 times in a second. Usually it's recommended if you do any kind of physics calculation that you do it under fixed update instead of update. So that's the main thing to keep in mind. They use fixed update if you're dealing with physics or rigid bodies. There's also late update. Whenever you call late update, it's guaranteed to happen after update. So if you're waiting for some value to be obtained inside of one of your mono behavior update methods, you can call that within the update. And, and then you can be assured that when late update is called, everything that needs to happen in update has already happened. There's also awake, which will happen the moment that this script exists in the scene, whether or not the game object is created. And then void start will happen whenever your game object is set to active. And then void start will happen the first time that the script is set to be active. So just like you can enable or disable a game object, you can also enable or disable scripts inside of the editor. You can see here this little checkbox. If I was to have this unchecked, but then 
during the game somehow I enable this boolean value, then at that point in time, the start method would be called. So there's these different life cycle events you can kind of hook into by implementing these methods. And by doing that, we can achieve most of what we need to inside of Unity.